Hi everyone, it's David Wheeler at Wickham Wanderers and you're listening to the Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. This week, have we got a show for you? Well, we do have a show every week, but this week in particular... It's good. It's good. It is good. Well, <laughs> It's quite a promise, isn't it? The others are rubbish. This one's good. <laughs> if, you, if you don't hear any others, listen to this one. Uh, we'll be catching up with Phil in a few moments' time with our pre-match briefing. We'll look ahead to the visit of Oxford United on Saturday. We'll look back briefly as well against that uh, frustrating defeat up at Bolton, conceding late again. And uh, but but Luke uh, scored a penalty. Yeah, exactly. There were many positives to yeah. come from from that uh, that experience. So uh, we'll catch up with manager Matt Blainfield as well uh, from Wickham Wanderers Women. We'll hear from Jesse Poulter who has played for the under-18s, the under-23s, of whom she captains, and also has made a number of appearances in the first team too. We'll catch up with uh, back with the men, Jack Grimmer as well, who uh, missed the trip to Bolton uh, with a calf strain, but uh, he spoke to us. Captain calf Jack. strain or not, doesn't matter. We can still get to speak to him if his strain is calfed. Uh, we'll, what? Uh, we'll be, and also, I'm quite excited because, uh, thanks to Wickham Wanderers Expert Association, a first for the Wickham Wanderers show, uh, many a time we've spoken to a Wickham Wanderers uh, ex-player. Sometimes live, sometimes yes. pre-recorded, but on this occasion, <gasps> in person, Ooh. Graham Brassington uh, will be with us. We should say happy birthday to JDT as well. Oh yes, week. a very um, large milestone of yes. a birthday. Twenty-five. Well, although he says what, what, what we read might not necessarily <laughs> be accurate. Um, <laughs> but yes, a big happy birthday to JDT for this week as well, uh, celebrating. So very much looking forward to the next hour. But first, uh, let's bring you uh, Phil's chat and start on uh, what happened on Tuesday. And as we mentioned, some positive and uh, a number of takeaways from it. There were a couple of takeaways because there was some services uh, on there <laughs> and on the way back. Very long journey for a Tuesday night. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the takeaways you were after. But uh, the takeaway from the game, well, um, Wickham played really well, but didn't take their chances. Um, and, uh, you know, we all know what happens when, when you don't do that. And uh, Wigan, I thought, were clinical. Their first goal um, was excellent um, in terms of, you know, the header. It was, it, was, it was a lot to do from that position for Geffen Jones. And it was a really good header. Uh, and their second goal, which killed the game, obviously, at the time it came, um, was, was really well executed by their substitute, Bod Varson, as well. Um, and, you know, we did get the goal that we deserved, but obviously it was the last kick of the game. Um, so therefore, um, didn't really impact the result at all. Um, but yeah, I think obviously, you know, we've gone up against a team who are sort of hunting the top two, um, in with a really good shout of automatic promotion. Um, and if you'd have just sort of fallen out of the sky before kickoff and watched the game, you probably wouldn't have known which one was which. Um, so there's positives there, of course. Um, but, you know, at the time, it was obviously quite deflating to lose the game having played so well. Um, but, you yeah, know, we all know it's a results business. We've, we've, we went into it off the back of a really good couple of results in the league. Um, it was a shame we couldn't, we couldn't add to the points total. But hearts be taken from the performance, especially with the points gained in the previous two games. And now it's about rolling the sleeves up and getting stuck in, into Oxford. And, you know, and, and Matt was pretty upbeat when I spoke to him after the game too. I think that we created uh, some real good chances to come away from home against a very good opponent. I think Ian's done a great job here, put a really strong squad together. Um, you can see with the amount of changes they can make and still be as strong as they are. But I'm proud of the performance that we put in. I felt like we came to go toe-to-toe and I think we did that. And we just lacked um, that last little touch, cutting edge in the top third of the pitch. Because um, I feel like we created some real good opportunities, especially to come away from home, create the chances we did. Um, so we're obviously really frustrated not to take anything from the game. And what about the opening goal as well from a, from a set piece? More frustration there? Yeah, of course. I don't want to keep using the word frustration because I don't think we should be negative on a night when we feel like we've played the way we have. Um, but of course, disappointing to, to give away a goal from a set piece. It always is, if you concede from a set piece. Um, and then, obviously, the second goal gets brought back for a free kick when you know all those little decisions keep going against you in a, in a second half where it changes the momentum. But I'm proud of the way the boys kept going and we, we um, rightfully got a, a goal that we were... Um, we'd worked hard for so um, little moments which unfortunately have ended up with us losing the game but in terms of performance I think we should be ple- pleased with that Hectic schedule and, and a few changes tonight talk us through those Yeah Jack Grimmer had a sore car from the game on Saturday which is why he had to come off you know looking at Kane Vincent Young's loading recently in terms of having a long time out of the team come in and play some 90 minutes it was discussed with the medical team that and we felt that he, he would be a bit of a red flag tonight so, so we made a couple of changes GMAC as well was another one who's had um, high loads. We've got a really you know, busy schedule and 
we're proud of the squad we put together in January and um, the only way to give those boys an opportunity is to, is to play them at times. I spoke to a couple of managers who I'm, I'm close with over the weekend and I just felt that after such a strong performance Saturday, the right thing was to do just to freshen up a couple um, with the ones that looked like they were risks. Um, we have a duty of care to the boys as well. We don't want to you know, off the back of a good result, put people at risk, and we and we feel that maybe. And um, but you know, hopefully those boys will be available for the weekend. I think I stand by those decisions because it was the right thing to do. So yeah, obviously disappointing off the back of a res- of, of a defeat. You question everything and and analyse everything, but we felt it was the right thing to do, and I think it gave us the energy. We played with energy and, and a freshness. So we'll have to um, you know see how the bodies are. We've got a couple of knocks in there, and we'll see and make sure we recover ready for the weekend. So we're really looking forward to the knocks of the game at home on Saturday. Ultimately, it was a consolation goal, but Wickham have had their problems from the penalty spot of late. So, was it? Pl- were you pleased to see that one hit the back of the net? Of course, yeah. And, and for Lukey to to step up and take another one, you know, he's been so reliable over the years from the spot. But you know, anyone who's willing to step up and take one from yeah, penalty, I think, is is fair play. So, um, Lukey to go and do that. There's nothing less than we deserved, I don't think, to get on the score sheet. Um, it's just a shame we didn't come five minutes earlier because um, had it done so we might have been able to, to go and get an equaliser uh, Long trip home but obviously big game on Saturday at Adams Park the local neighbours Oxford United and you'll be looking to recreate the atmosphere from Saturday going back into that one Yeah it's up to us to recreate the intensity and energy in our performance and, and I'm sure the supporters will be um, looking to turn up and, and really cheer us on um, in what's a big game for the club so yeah we'll be ready um, we'll recover right we'll get ourselves ready to go I dare say there might be a couple of changes because there'll be some tired legs after the game tonight um, with this intense schedule we have to make sure that we're fresh and ready to go in every game so yeah it's up to us to get the intensity ready for the weekend and we, we look forward to doing so I, th- I think it really feels as well from, from hearing the manager speak there that you know that that result and that performance really hasn't derailed the momentum that is building or has been building from, from the, the recent cup and league performances yeah, look, he's been pretty consistent throughout the season in terms of his approach, isn't he? About looking for the performance, um, and if, if that's there, then then you know the results do come. Um, obviously, we had a long period where where the wins weren't coming, um, and it was fine margins. And you can probably fold that game in in the same category, which um, I think had that been against a team in the bottom half of the table would have been concerning. But I think the the, man, the manner of the performance. Um, the fact that we've had quite a large rotation in January in terms of players in and out, you know, and hopefully um, we could be more clinical on on Saturday. We certainly were uh, last Saturday against Peterborough, and you know, if we can take that attitude and, and, and clinicality into the, the Oxford game, we should be okay. Oxford are a team that are doing well this season, or well, not as well as they started out, but you know, they're in, they're in the top six, they're in the hunt. Their new manager. They've changed in this season. Has had a window, so they're going to be looking to sort of gain some momentum now as we as we enter the final straight. But it's a bit like the Peterborough game, isn't it? Whenever these games come up in a season, they're tasty games because you know us and Peterborough seem to have a bit of a, a bit of a friendly needle, which is always good and adds a bit of spice. And and Oxford, uh, although they will absolutely insist they're not our rivals, they're our neighbours. And you know, th- th- there'll be people who will go to work on Monday who will work with Oxford fans and vice versa. And that's where the fun comes. And it's why it's really important that Wickham Wanderers win that game so those fans can go into work on Monday and, uh, and continue to lord it over our neighbours uh, from up the road. And it's been shown recently as well, really important and it makes such a difference to, to, to go ahead early in a game and to get some extra goals as well. So it doesn't matter quite so much if, if goals are conceded late on. Yes. Yeah. A few people sort of, you know, uh, sort of whispered the uh, the Gourmania word around Adams Park after the game on Saturday because there was certainly a whiff of that because, you know, we sort of cruise into a 3 0 lead and then in the blink of an eye, it's back to 3 2 with 21 minutes to go and, you, and it's looking incredibly open. You think, blimey, what? what's going to happen here um, and the substitutes really made a big impact and, and Wickham were able to steer steer the game uh, back towards uh, uh, back towards Wickham in terms of momentum and, and add the goals uh, it must be said uh, um, uh, assisted by by some some of the errors of their goalkeeper too but you've still got to take the chances um, and yeah so you know uh, again, the high press really worked. It's no secret from the last game against Peter, their keeper struggled with that. Uh, he certainly struggled with it again on Saturday and the game plan worked. Um, and I think everyone sort of across the team had a really, really good game. I thought Dale Taylor probably had his best game 
for Wickham Wanderers. Didn't score, but he um, he was instrumental in, in in so much in that ten role, and and he, he had some really good moments on Tuesday night as well. Um, so it looks like we've got players coming into form. Um, I think Matt Butcher has been a huge addition in the midfield. Um, and he's really opened up some options for Wickham Wanderers, um, which is good because it keeps the rotation there, keeps the fresh legs, it keeps the competition for places very much alive. Um, but it also allows Freddie Potts to be that little bit more creative. It takes the defensive shackles away from him a bit as well. There's always going to be that part of his game, but he can also look forward a bit more too. And he's such a good player that I think Matt Butcher's really bringing it out of him, a bit like Josh Gowan was. And, you know, that stat that Josh Gowan and Freddie Potts, I think, have only played 60 minutes together, I think, once uh, since the since October. Um, and lo and behold, that was the, the run where we didn't really win any games in the league. And is, is that a coincidence? Probably not. So I think the additions have been excellent and we're set now for hopefully a period of consolidation and, and moving up the table. And also... Let's not forget a uh, potential of a trip to Wembley. One game away from Wembley, big uh, big cup semi final next week too. You get the sense fans are quite excited by you know the prospect of what Richard Kone could do next, or, or any of the other uh, new signings as well, for that matter. Yeah, you know, Beverly Labala, you know, his pressing when he came off the bench on on Saturday, instrumental uh, for Wickham's third. Uh, and, you know, he really puts himself about. Um, he had a glorious chance, didn't he, to open his Wickham account on Tuesday night and um, got it on target, but it was uh, probably too comfortable of a save for his liking. But, you know, hopefully that first goal will come because the work rate and the attitude seems to be absolutely spot on. Um, so hopefully um, that can really, you know, if we can get Beverly kicking as well. Richard just looks fantastic, doesn't he, in terms of his... His, his running, his pace, uh, his intelligence on the ball. Um, he's just one of those players that seems to make things happen. And there's the element of the unknown about him as well, obviously, because of the level he's come from. You know, there won't be a huge amount of people who know more about him. Obviously, that's going to erode as, as games go on and people can get, get a good look at him. But yeah, he's just been been excellent. The assist on Saturday for Jack Grimmer was, was excellent. And, you know, he really sort of put the defenders through their paces. And, you know, Matt's, doing the right thing. He's managing him and managing his minutes and, and not putting too much pressure on and making sure that we're sort of developing him uh, his all-round game as well. But I've been really impressed with his sort of defensive ability at corners as well, something that Sam Vokes and, and formerly A, Akin Femme used to do superbly for Wickham too. And it looks like Richard Kona has got that in his locker, which is, is a big plus too. It sets up nicely, doesn't it, for a big occasion and game on, on Saturday. You've got a team coming uh, who are um, in the you know top six on the table, as you say, and also a really special occasion for the, the club and supporters to be able to to commemorate and, and celebrate the life of, of of Adam, who was obviously you know taken far too early, but to really show great support to, to his family and, and loved ones as well. Yeah, I think it's um, a fantastic gesture by the club, you know, in you know Adams Park. You know, the, the placing of the apostrophe is is hugely important but even more so on Saturday because I think it just shows you that you know, a football club is a family. Um, when you support a football club, you become something bigger than, than yourself. You're part of all of that. Adam's family are, are season ticket holders. He loved football. He loved Wickham Wanderers. Um, and, you know, we don't know what his family are going through right now. I mean, it must be absolutely devastating for them. Um, and if there's any comfort to be to be had from from the football club, um, hopefully that can provide some distraction and some comfort, as I say. But also, you know, it's people who've... I didn't know Adam, but I've got a young son and, you know, it really hits home. And people will feel that and they'll feel that we need to pull together and in solidarity and show support for the family. And, you know, and hopefully they can take, they can take something from that um, and there'll be some hard days ahead for them. But the football club will always be there. Adam's spirit will always be at Adam's Park. And hopefully his family can see the link of the football club to, to their son and 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 take it from there. But yeah, it's dreadfully tough times for them. And hopefully on Saturday, uh, he can get a really lovely tribute. His teammates as well. You know, we must mention his teammates who, who would have seen um, Adam be taken ill um, during a game. Um, being incredibly tough for them too, um, not only because they've lost a teammate and a, and a dear friend, but also to, to see that happen on a pitch. You know, thoughts to them as well. And, you know, hopefully on Saturday, I'm sure it will be a, a wonderful tribute and hopefully a, a fitting game as well and we can concern on the style. It must mean so much to his family as well, for, for the players to have uh, sent their condolences on social media, for the manager to, to speak and for the club, as you say, to, to do so much in, in his memory. 
yeah, it's it's uh, it's the human reaction, isn't it? And we're very fortunate at Wickham that we have players who are connected to the fan base. Um, they understand, and you know, it puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? Because football is is the most important thing of of the non important things, but life, family, and everything is is so much more important. But football kind of knits it all together. And we've got footballers who are very emotionally intelligent here who understand that. We've got people who, you know, their fathers, their parents, they understand. Um, and, you know, it, it may just be a message. It may just be words, but it, it can mean a, a huge amount to people. Um, and like I say, we're lucky to have good players here who understand that. Real pleasure to speak to you. Great message. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Cheers, Colin. Great catching up with Phil, and you can hear more from that interview with the manager uh, on the website and on Wanderers TV. We'll chat to Graham Bressington in a few moments' time. But first, uh, the Chair Girls, Wickham Wanderers women, uh, unfortunately uh, defeated at the weekend, and uh, have been catching up with Jessie Poulter, uh, who has not only played for the under 18s, captain the under 23s, but also uh, made some uh, first team appearances as well. It's been amazing. It's such an incredible opportunity to step up. It's been a very different season because I've got the opportunity to play for the under 18s first team and my under 23 team but the first team is just amazing all the girls are so supportive so it's been really really good how have you found the different experiences the under 18s are a great team they're really technical so it's just and then my under 23s are amazing they're so supportive and we have such a good bond so the, the playing with them is just incredible and then the first team is just a whole new experience because obviously it's a bit more women's football so I'm 17 and I'm trying to step into women's football, which is difficult, but the girls really support you through it and it's been really, really good. Have you found it a real step up or has the transition been quite quite smooth for you? Well, the coaches have just helped me a lot. I know my first game, I definitely struggled when we played Ascot. I think it was the first game of the season in the league. I was definitely trying to keep up with the pace, which was hard and then the physicality was a lot different. But I think I'm getting there and the girls are helping, so it should be all good soon. So and of course, you right captain in. the under 23s. Has that really helped as well with, with, with sort of settling in? And do you find that you bring some of those qualities into, into the first team as well? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I definitely know I'm trying to be more of a leader, bringing it from the 23s game. And obviously, I don't want to say too much on in the first team because I'm not fitting in exactly how they want me to and I'm learning how to. But being able to talk to Bobby, who's an amazing captain, and then learning off her and then trying to do what she does in her game has helped me bring it into the first team game. Have you noticed your own own progress too? I'm quite hard on myself usually, but I know my dad and obviously the coaches have told me that like I've been fitting in well. So I hope to see it in my own game a lot more. I hope to improve more and more so that I'm able to see it myself, but I'm always quite hard on myself. And are the sort of standards of opposition very different, say, for the first team to the under-23s? I mean, it's a step up because I think they're just a bit more technical. I think... In some aspects, they're quite similar, but in others, it's like the professionalism is there more, like especially in the leagues and the competitions they play in, like playing Bournemouth, you can just see that they have tactics and we have to face those tactics and like amend to it. So our strategies have to fit in with theirs and just it's a lot more professionalism in the first team's game. It seems a strange thing to say, but do you feel really quite, quite experienced? Because as, as you mentioned, you're only very young, but you've been at the, the club a couple of seasons now and, and you had time at Watford as well. I've been experienced, but only in, it's not been adults football. So I've been playing in like the JPL, where the girls are very, very technical. But then this season is my first time properly stepping up into women's football. So I'm not experienced in that sense. I've, I've just learned from other players and I think that's helped me a lot. And obviously Carl was at Watford as well. It must be great to be sort of working with him again. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I was only 15 when he was at Watford as head coach. So I didn't really spend much time with him, but I heard he was a great coach. And then being able to actually be coached by him was really, really good and helped me a lot because he makes me see a different side of the game. And obviously last season was a real um, sort of season of transition, I think, for the, for the first team. But this season feels much more kind of established and you know, making great strides, hopefully, towards you know, those, that, that top part of the table. Yeah, it's it's been really inspiring because I've heard that they weren't getting anywhere near Bournemouth in previous games, but now we're getting closer and we managed to beat them 2-1. And I think that's amazing. I think next season they might be able to move up and that's really what Wickham are wanting. And do you feel sort of within the team that you're, you know, we talked about your own kind of personal game, but do you feel that the team as a, as a collective is is getting nearer and nearer to, to that standard as well? 100%. I mean... Bringing in Danny as a coach has really helped. Like his strategies are incredible, 
and I think the girls are really picking it up and just just learning from them and you can see them taking it aboard and we've put it into our game and we're coming out with closer wins and we just need to finish them off really and get those goals and I think they've been amazing and they know exactly what they're doing now so it's just improvement from here. And it's also disappointing to have that, that cup defeat on Sunday, but so many positives to take from from the, the performance. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we just didn't take our chances, but it definitely wasn't an uneven game. We definitely could have won and gone through to the semis, but it's just unfortunate. It wasn't our day. And have you learned a lot as a, as a team as to you know the progress that you've made and the opposition that you've faced this season? Well, we've learned a lot from other teams. I know Bournemouth, especially, because obviously I've played against them, but they're just they're such an incredible team and we can see how they work together and they bond and they gel. And I think we just need to improve little aspects of our game and then learn from other teams and we'd be able to be just as good as them. So it's been amazing. And it must feel quite a nice sort of period for yourself because, you know, we mentioned that you're only 17, but, you know, there must be kind of role models and players that you look up to in, in the first team, but also, you know, some that, that find you quite inspiring as well, especially in the under-18s and the under-23s that you captain as well. I hope so. I mean, I try my hardest as a captain, but... Yeah, no, I just try and lead. And I know even the girls, I I learn from them. Even the under-18s I can learn from. They're just all incredible players and I know they all have massive potentials. So I'm just learning from everywhere and I hope they're learning from me as well. And what would you like to achieve uh, personally and as, uh, for the team, you know, going into these last five games of the season? I just, I mean, I hope we can go top three, top four of the league for the first team and then I know my under-23 team. I don't think we can win the league anymore. But I know we can get top three. So just top of the league would be great because we put in so much effort this season. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Second part of the Wickham Wanderer Show still to come on this week's programme. We'll catch up with defender Jack Grimmer ahead of the visit of Oxford United this coming Saturday, which, among the uh, significant aspects of the game, uh, sees Mark West uh, come to the Legends Lounge. You'll have the opportunity to hear him in a question and answer session. Well, and see him as well. (laughs) But also, speaking of hearing and seeing uh, a former colleague of Mark West, someone who played with him uh, at uh, schoolboy level and also at Wickham Wanderers as well, I'm very pleased to welcome to the studio in a ex-player association Wickham Wanderers show first, uh, Graham Brassington. Hello, sir. Hello there. Very pleased to meet you. It's a real pleasure to to have you on. Uh, Graham Brassington of Stoke and Church. It sounds quite grand, doesn't it? (laughs) Yeah, it's not, though, I can assure you. (laughs) And we talked there about your your association with, uh, we'll we'll talk obviously about your association with Wickham Wanderers, but your association with with Mark goes back to sort of pre-war, I mean the the Falklands War, (laughs) admittedly, but but a time when when you played at uh, High Wickham Schoolboys. Yeah, I mean, we started we playing against each other when we were probably about six or seven years of age and then started to play together from the age of nine onwards, really. So, and with the English schools and all the way through to winning the English schools trophy when we were under 15s, which was, you know, a, a great achievement for all of us. The likes of myself, Mark, and Kevin Keane as well that came on and played for Wickham as, as well. So, yeah, very enjoyable days. And I imagine none of you could have could have um, thought at that time, you know, that you you'd go on and have such you know great careers, and especially your, your your links with Wickham. Well, we probably all hoped that we would, but whether it was going to happen or not was another thing. But I'm sure we believed in ourselves at the time. So, yeah, very lucky to have achieved what we've achieved. So, what would you say is your earliest memory of your of your time at the club? Um, very early was playing in the reserves um, when Timmy Anning was running running the reserves and. Mike Keane was running the first team and just the away games and getting involved with the first team and, and we used to have training sessions on a Thursday at the ground and Mick had liked to do a pattern of play and get his first team ready and sort of get us to come and play against them in a game and me and Anthony Dell decided this was our opportunity to kick the living daylights out of his brother and Howard Kennedy so that we could try and get a game for Saturday. <laughs> was not always successful. And we spoke off air as well about the, the fantastic bond that, that, that you had with, with so many you know, players around that time as well. Yeah, there was, it was probably one of the last eras where there were so many local lads that, that played football for Wickham Wanderers and all the people in the stands that used to come and watch, they probably had family members that were actually playing. And we didn't just play football together, we, we, we played cricket together, we drank together, we laughed together. So it was very much a really big family sort of orientated thing so that's probably why we got results when maybe we didn't deserve results because we worked very hard for each other 
And was there an extra sort of sense of pride, really, that you're representing your local team? Yeah, um, massively. I mean, it's it's very rare nowadays where you get an opportunity to play for your local side, and you can see some of the top stars in the world, like people like Alan Shearer, the pride he has to play for his local side, Newcastle, and and it's the same for us in a smaller way. We're we're a smaller club, but it, it's it's very proud, very proud to be a member of Wickham Wanderers ex players and to have played and represented my local town. Well, I'm sure you're, you're very modest um, in the, the you, you, you know, it, but a fantastic kind of contribution that, that you made and, and to the you know the other players of that you know generation you had that, yeah that the league win as well and obviously the, the the fantastic kind of camaraderie that you all share. Yeah, very much so. It's a shame we don't see a little bit more of each other, but our lives all drift away and there's lots of people who don't live around here anymore. So that's why it's nice for me to come into the studio. I only live up the road, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, it's worked very well indeed. We, we, we've benefited enormously from... from <laughs> this is a first for the Wicked Wonder Show. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited, uh, as you can probably tell. Um, but I guess it must be nice for you as well, in the, you know, the position that you played, to, to be able to affect games you know, from, from there so well as well. Uh, yeah, but you need, you need people to finish the games off. And all, all, the, all the sides in the country and the world are all looking for the centre forward to score goals. And you've mentioned his name earlier, and there's a gentleman that's, that's scored so many goals for Wickham Wanderers, it's unbelievable in Mark West. And, and with him at the head of your game, you've got every chance of winning games. You, if you put it in the right place, Mark, Mark will score. Mark was an exceptionally good goal scorer. And did you know that from sort of really early on? Very much so, yeah. I mean, even from a young, young age. I, I could stand in the same positions of Mark and never score in, in my life and Mark would be there and he'd score every time. It was just, it was a gift, a natural gift to him and he was very, very good at it, which allowed us to win quite a few games. You have played in a number of positions, of course. Um, yes, you're going to ask me about playing in goal now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played in goal twice for Wickham and once was... Gary Lester got um, injured at Farnborough in the warm-up, so I played a whole game. And the other game was against Bognor Regis when um, Gary got injured at half-time and I had to come out for the second half. And probably the only thing I did was pick a free kick out of the net that Mickey Thomas had put in the top corner. And But barring that, I did what I could. We didn't have sub-goalkeepers then and a bench full of six or seven different substitutions. We only had a couple and... So, so was that something that you, you kind of uh, offered your services to, or were you selected to uh, to, to go in that uh, position? It was one, of, yeah. It was a bit of a mixture. Is whether you say that you were volunteered, or you was the one that stood still when everyone went here, do it. So yeah, I, I don't mind going and go. I don't mind trying to help out. So I just did the best I could. And it's really nice speaking to ex-players from different generations, and you must find as well, you know, when you attend the functions of the ex-players, and you know. Each kind of almost decade has a real group that's that's really special. Yeah, there is, like you say, because it's a small club. It's it's the bond you have within the era of football that you play, and you do you stay friends for the rest of your life, and and that doesn't change. And sometimes you you meet people you haven't met for ten, fifteen years, and you're straight back into taking the mick out of each other again and winding each other up and messing about, which is which is a lovely thing to do. It's almost unique, isn't it, football? Because I often joke that you know, if accountants probably don't, you know, go, oh, do you remember those those spreadsheets we did years ago? They were fantastic, weren't they? Yeah, slightly more boring being an accountant, <laughs> I would have thought, than playing football. But but we're really really lucky people that we've got an opportunity to do this for a living, and 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 hopefully, you know, some of the youngsters coming through will have the same opportunities that we've had. So I, I like to ask as well, does it feel like a long time ago that, that you played for the club or does it feel like, you know, kind of only sort of almost yesterday or...? Um, when you go down there, it, you, you sort of remember things. I mean, Lokes Park was where I played most of my games or all my games for Wickham. I only played against Wickham at Adams Park. So Adams Park doesn't mean as much to me perhaps as, as Lokes Park would, but... You know, I'm 57. It does seem ages ago. <laughs> when, when I see him running about, I don't think I could do much of that anymore. And Lopes Park obviously has such great character and the, the slope everyone talks about as well. Mm. Yeah, the slope, I, I don't know, was it about 11, 12 foot from one corner to the other? You had to play in a certain way at Lopes Park, but the pitch itself was immaculate. The ball always moved well. And Wickham have always been renowned for knocking the ball about and playing attractive football. And are there any real games that actually stand out you know, and real occasions or experiences that you had you know, during your time at the club? Um, I suppose in, in the years when we've been, we won the uh, Ishmian League, 
there's like the the latter stages, the last three or four games when we was playing, when we went away at Bognor and and won on a miserable day and things like that. That they're, they're the ones that stand out because they're the ones that you've worked really hard to to achieve and. They're not always games that you're the best side in, but they're the game that you've wanted it more and worked hard to do it. And did it feel like it was a real great grounding for, for the career that you went on to have after your time at the club too? Uh, massively, because I played with some really, really exceptional players at Wickham and, and there's been lots more exceptional players to come after me as well. So, yeah, it, it, it's a brilliant club, very good club. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's, I think, in a way, it's so hard to kind of put your finger on what it is, but a real kind of family atmosphere, and as you say, so many people that that have played there keep coming back. Yeah, very much so. And there's, I walk down there now, and although I've played for other sides, and I walk in there, there's people that remember me playing and always come up and speak to you. Always have got good things to say about you, and it it makes you feel good. Do you appreciate that at the time? Do you, do you think when when you're playing, you think what what kind of an effect you'll have on someone's Saturday or, or midweek? I don't. I don't think you try and think about it too much because otherwise it detract from what you're trying to do. But upon reflection, you look there and you have affected people's lives. And you have, hopefully, when we've won more games, people have gone away feeling really happy. But it's not always the same when you lose. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite extreme, isn't it? Football in that sense, you yeah. can either make someone's day or. <laughs> <laughs> it's very black and white football. You're either good, you're bad, you've won, you've lost. There's no middle areas really with it. And we touched on, you know, we've spoken to, to Mark on the show as well, but and the fact that he'll be at the game against Oxford on, on Saturday, and it, you know, you, people say you know legendary figure, but you say the goals that he scored and you know the the, the success he had at the club as well. I mean, you've got the likes of Mark and, and Bodger Orsman, uh, the two greatest goal scorers. That score for week. I mean, each era will tell you someone that is exceptionally good, but I don't think I've met many people better than Mark in front of goal in my career at any level, to be honest. And such a time as well, if you, you know, <clears throat> similar to myself, when you start following a club at that age or at that at that kind of stage, and and to see someone like him, you know, being so prolific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're very enjoyable, but it allows you to have confidence that your side's going to have an opportunity to win the game. Because if you don't score goals, you're not winning many games. I can't usually say prolific as well. I feel, I feel, I feel like... yeah, yeah. even with them new teeth, <laughs> it worked quite well. I was brave to take it on, and and also you know fantastic as you say this kind of the career that you went on to have after your time at Wickham as well. You, you can must look back and with such pride at that too. We we were talking when you you came to watch Lincoln play uh, and you were in the away end. Yeah, I've, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's strange. Quite conspicuously. Yeah, it's strange really being a, a local boy being in the away end, but I, I've got. Fond memories of Lincoln City Football Club. I was captain there for a few years and I've got lots of friends up there even now. So, yeah, I, I've enjoyed my time at every club I've been at and I've always tried to give my best for the team and the supporters and, and that's what I've always tried to do. So that's hopefully why people get on all right with me. And really nice that you played as well for other, other clubs locally and, and coached other clubs locally as well. Yeah, I've, I've been lucky enough to go down and play for um, Chalfont St Peter and Marlow and managed with a very good friend of mine, Kevin Stone, who, who actually played for Wickham Wanderers himself in his time, but was mainly remembered, I suppose, for all the good cup runs that Marlow had at the time against West Brom and Tottenham Hotspur and people like that. We should ask after your health as well, because we're, we're very lucky to have you in, in more than one way. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been through the mill a little bit. I had an heart attack about three years ago, but I mean... I really need to probably talk to Glyn Creaser because he's had a few problems recently as well. Perhaps we can start talking, instead of talking about drinking and going out, we can talk about medication and <laughs> how we're feeling. It's, it's a stage in life you get to when you realise <laughs> yeah, that, that's the topic of conversation. <laughs> Very much so. So we, as long as we're not looking at the obituaries, we'll be all right. And you were saying that he's someone that you've played against as well? Yeah, Glyn was a very good player. I played against Glyn. He's a strong he was a good captain. He looked after his players. He looked after his side. He's, he's a very good man. And Wickham's obviously a team that you've always you know looked out looked, looked, looked out for since, since your time at the club. Yeah, always results. Saturday, you'd always you know you'd be very engaged in what you're doing yourself for your own side. But you'll always look for results for Wickham, and I'd always look for Wickham and Lincoln now. Well, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much indeed for, for coming in and uh, uh, hopefully that um, we'll get a good result for, for Mark to be at the Legends Lounge on Saturday against well, Oxford as well. Well, hopefully against Oxford we can get a good win and move ourselves up the table. Are you going to that more. game as well? Uh, I won't be able to make that game. I've got another commitment. Well, hopefully we'll see you at Adams Park very soon. Very soon. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, Graham Bresson, the first 
uh, Wickham Wanderers ex-player to, to be with us uh, in the studio on the Wickham Wanderers show hopefully the first of many online on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM this is Wickham Sound final part of this week's Wickham Wanderers show uh, we'll uh, lots to reflect on uh, as we build up to the game against Oxford United at home on Saturday also of course preparing for the Bristol Street Motors Trophy semi-final at Bradford on Wednesday night uh, very much looking forward to that game too but first uh, I've been speaking to defender Jack Grimmer who unfortunately uh, didn't make the trip to uh, uh, who did we play on Tuesday uh, I was going to say Brighton that was the other week uh, Bolton, very similar sounding words uh, because of a slight injury that he picked up on Saturday but uh, as you'll hear uh, hopes to be fit uh, for the visit of Oxford on Saturday Yeah, so I just got a little bit of a, a tight calf it's the calf that sort of injured earlier on in the season and it just randomly decided it, it wanted, to, wanted to sort of stiffen up and I, I was kind of a bit worried about it but thankfully it seems to be all okay as you said there, I, I missed the game unfortunately on Tuesday night against Bolton which, you know, you, you don't want to miss any games, to be honest with you. So I was gutted not to be up there with the boys. But it's it's one that hopefully settles quickly and, and you know, hopefully I can be back out there on Saturday. Because it, it feels a bit of a shame to obviously um, interrupt your momentum. Obviously, you'd be keen to talk about the team, but I think we should we should focus on you for a bit. And it just seems to be going so well for you at the moment with, with goals and, you know, such great performances at the back, either at centre-back or, or your more regular position. You're featured in Teams of the Week. I spoke to a fan recently as well who's saying, you know, he, he he's noticed and other people that he, he sits with at the ground how, how your game has come on. Is that something that you've noticed personally as well? Yeah, I think it's just coming with that sort of, you know, it's just like anything. I think football, I like anything in life is a confidence thing. And I think, not that I didn't have it before, but I just think I've, I've been given a platform now to, you know, maybe with the armband as well. I just think it's it all adds up to a lot of people around you believing in you. And I think contrary to the, the league table, I feel like we've really assembled a team of great players. And, you know, when they're telling you you're doing well and the manager's telling you you're doing well, I think it's, it does nothing but build your confidence up. And I think it's, you know, every player goes out there and, and plays their best when they're happy. And that's no different from myself. So, you know, I am going through quite a rich brain of form, I think, at the minute. And, you know, if I can chip in a couple more goals between now and the end of the season, I'll be delighted. But, you know, I think the main thing is, is that, you know, recently results have, have picked up and we've started to get the results that we feel that we've deserved because, you know, there's only so long that you can say, oh, we're unlucky or oh, things aren't going our way. But, you know, at the end of the day, you need to be winning games of football and that's what it's all about. Do you think it's linked to what you've been putting on your porridge? <laughs> I would like to think so. I would like to think it's the the secret ingredient to, <laughs> to the whole, to everyone playing well, to be honest. I've upped, I've upped the intake of it and that's why I've been scoring it and I would love to tell you that's the case. But it's probably the opposite, to be honest. I've cut it out and, and now I've started scoring and playing better. But... <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely something much loved down at the training ground for sure. And just obviously not just your own performance, but defensively as as a unit, you know, there, there's been some really really solid displays recently. Yeah, there has been. I think I think we feel like we've been quite solid. But you know, even even like on Saturday, you know, you're kind of cruising through the game and you were three 0 up at that point. And um, you know, I think the boys still feel, you know, especially the defensive boys that we we feel solid, but we're not getting the clean sheets that you know, that we, we we should be. I think it's one of those things that, you know, as a defender, you, it's been amazing scoring goals recently, but I pride myself on clean sheets and being solid defensively to let the front boys go do their stuff. And it is something that this season we haven't managed to do quite as often as previous years. I think previous years we've sort of had a base to, to sort of build from that this season, unfortunately, just hasn't been there. And I think it is something that we've been looking at a lot, And but it but it's then can be, that are counterproductive that you know, the more you focus on it the more you concede which is frustrating but you know I've no doubt that we'll get the balance right and you know I, I, like I said every defender prides himself on being sort of solid and secure first And do you take encouragement from the fact that you haven't had many heavy defeats they've all been quite quite narrow narrow losses the, the ones that you have had Yeah I do I think you know even last night I think it, the game ends 2-1 and you know, I think if we hadn't, I don't think, but I know obviously if we hadn't conceded the second goal against Bolton, then you probably nick a draw. And I just think it's it's frustrating. I mean, it is good because we are always in the games, but it's, it adds that extra layer of frustration because we feel that we're very close and we feel like we've been very close in a lot of games. And, you know, it's not just one or two decisions or late goals that go against us it's been you know a good handful of times and and don't get me wrong there is a reason for that I'm not saying that we're unlucky to concede late goals there is a reason that we're conceding late goals and you know it's something that we've been working on as well in the training ground in the 
in the meeting room and and it is something that we want to fix and because we know that how much points it's cost us this season and we know that our season in the league would look completely different if we had managed to stamp that out of the game so it is something that we uh, have been working on and it's you know like I said we're always in every game which it shows us that we know that we're close and, and we just have to keep doing the right things you say there is a reason. Is it just one thing or is it a collection of things that, that leads to conceding late? No, I think it is a collection of things. I think when the gaffer always says a goal's never normally one person's fault. Um, you know, obviously you get the rare occasions that it is one person's fault, but it's it is a team game at the end of the day. And, you know, normally when we concede, we watch sort of probably a minute to thirty seconds before the goal's conceded to see what how it led to that moment. And you know the late goals are no different. It's it's no one person's fault normally, and it's 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 very much a lot of things going wrong at the same time that then end up at the it end up with you conceding. But it it has been fine margins this season. I feel like we've been punished for you know, and I, I feel like I'm in a a very good place to to say that because I've been here in for the last four years, and I've felt that at times we've gotten away with things that you know when we've been defending backs against the wall, we kind of get away with things and we've been very solid and things. But this season, I feel like we're getting punished for every little detail that's out of place and we're having to work extra hard for every win at the minute. So it's, it is, it's something that, you know, it's frustrating because I feel like we're having to work extra hard. But then again, when you win and you get the result, it's extra satisfying. It must be really tricky to put your finger on, especially as a defender, because, you know, as you say, there are so many variables and, you know, each game is different, obviously, and and there must be so many different things where you think, oh, it could be that or it could be that. Yeah, absolutely. We go through, you know, the in the team meetings and, you know, we've had a, few, a, a good number of them and we go through the goals and it's, you know, it, and it is, it's... it's it's frustrating because it's like if you did that and if I did this and, you know, everyone is, and to be fair, it's it's a probably a sign of the team that we've managed to assemble that everyone sits there and puts their hand up straight away and saying, listen, I should have done that and I could have done better at this. And, you know, and everyone takes real accountability and I think that's how we move forward. But, you know, it is something that's frustratingly just been the story of our season so far. And, you know, hopefully we have enough time still to change it so that it isn't the story of our season, um, you know, with, with big, big games coming up in the future. So it's, yeah, like I said, it's something to focus on but not get bogged down by. And have you noticed there's been a real kind of pro, <clears throat> pro process or has there been just sort of one thing that kind of happened that's really led to the, the change in fortunes? Because it feels a bit like, oh, you know, we've, we've endured quite a hard winter, but we're coming through spring now. There was that period where, you know, just the one uh, win in 17 league games, but then, you know, things really started to, to improve and turn around. Obviously, uh, you came out after one of the games and GMAC spoke so passionately as well. And, and since then, things, things seem, seem to be really improving. Obviously, you've got uh, many players coming back from injury as well. Yeah, I think I don't think anything really changed. I just think you know the, the gaffer was, you know, unbelievably positive all throughout the winter period and all throughout that run of games and you know all through this sort of tough period of like you said the, the one win in, in quite a long time there and it was I think just the boys started to get that um, maybe a bit of belief. I think we were, you know, going into games and then things were going against us and it just feels like a bit of a victim mentality whereas now I think we've got that bounce about a back up uh, you know about us and you know it's probably it's just got to be down to the gaffer I mean he's I've never you know seen someone so positive so consistently and you know he believes in what we're doing so much that you can't help but believe in it and I think it's thankfully we've we've now started to repay his belief in us with you know results and performances that marry up but you know I think we're but a long way off, I think, repaying sort of the beliefs because he's he's given us a lot this season and he's taken a lot of stick, you know, off the fans because, you know, the, I think recently the, the fans think or are, are sort of become accustomed to us being a lot higher up the table, which, you know, us players, you know, you ask any of the players that we signed in this, in this summer, they didn't come here to be languishing in 15th, 16th. You know, they want to be up towards the playoffs. So it is something that, you know, we've got a long way to fix and, you know, we just need to keep out churning out the performances and, you know, I'm sure the results will follow. It seems so easy, doesn't it, for to, to, as a fan just to say, oh, the players have lacked urgency or, you know, they've not. But I guess it's it's difficult when you're on the field as well. <clears throat> it, you know, you, you want to give the, the best impression and the best inca- account of yourselves in each game. Yeah, I think it was an interesting one because I, I get, I totally get the fans' opinions when they, they said that sometimes that we looked like we were either tired or leggy or lacked urgency. And I think if you were winning games 
more often than we were, then you're allowed a performance like that. You're allowed, to, you know, every so often, oh, the boys looked leggy on Saturday, the boys weren't quite at it. But unfortunately, we were going through a phase that we weren't winning games. Now, we were putting in performances and not getting the wins, but then when we didn't put in the performance and didn't get the win, then it came with extra criticism, which is understandable because, you know, the fans will say that you're not winning games, which I totally get. But I think the players tried to put it all into context and try to not bear such a heavy load because I think it's, you know, inevitably it's only going to be detrimental to, to what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. And I think a big thing for us is with the players that we've now got in the team and the way in the style that we like to play, I think confidence is a massive thing. And, you know, if the confidence is high, like you've seen in recent weeks in flying, and then performances will marry up with that and, and we'll really get the points that we deserve. But, you know, I think when we go through those harder phases, I think it is, you know, something that we have to adapt to. And, you know, whether that's changing up the style or, or whatever that is, is up to the gaffer. But it's, Thankfully, like I said, it's we're, we seem to be in a good spot at the minute, you know, personally and a, as in a collective. We've found the results, I think, and, you know, hopefully that can continue because, you know, we're not under any illusion that we've cracked it. You know, we're still, after the Peterborough game, we're, we're in there dissecting it before the Bolton game and, you know, the hard work never stops. There does seem to be so many positives at the moment, don't there? We, we talk about the uh, defensively, but also, for example, the uh, Gareth's goal against Cheltenham, that was fantastic. You think, oh, that's what he does. And, and, and Sam scored more goals <clears> recently. And, you know, there seems so many chances being created as well. Yeah, I think it's I think it, typical of any Wickham team that I've played for since I've been here. I think the, the main ethos is throughout whoever's, you know, been in charge is that we're a better team when we're on the front foot and we are being positive, we're energetic, we're trying to create chances. And... I think, you know, in recent games, we've we've really seen that, you know, eight goals, you know, before, well, nine goals actually, including Tuesday nights against Bolton, but um, in three games just shows the, the firepower and the the momentum that we can create. I think when we get the players, the front players, the ball in the best areas, you know, they've shown that they can do the business. And like I said, it's it's when the team is playing like that, I think that's definitely when you see us at our best. And I think now we've hopefully found a bit of a rhythm and a stride because it is a really tough period of fixtures. It's you know you play a lot of the top six teams, top eight teams, and I think the more that you can just go out there with the confidence, you know you're inevitably going to have a better chance of winning. And so encouraging playing against the likes of Bolton and, and Peterborough, who are, are well up there to to show you that you know you obviously can be competitive with them, which which is great going into into Saturday's big game at home to Oxford. Yeah, I think that's probably another frustrating thing is that we are feel like we are so good at going toe to toe with the the teams doing well in this league and uh, and I've no doubt that those teams don't want to play us but you know maybe against the lesser teams or the mid table teams is where we've slipped up a lot this season and even when we went away to Oxford away to Peterborough you know at home to Bolton the performances were there it's just that we never got the win that we that we needed and I think it's sort of another layer of frustration in the sense that it's we back ourselves against those teams and maybe it's just you know, we need to change our way of, of thinking when it comes to, to the, not even the lesser teams, you know, no disrespect, it's just more the teams further down the league. And a cup semi-final just around the corner as well, a real lift for, for yourselves and, and also the fans too. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I, I really, really do hope for, you know, the fans' sake and our sake and, and the gaffer's sake that we can win that and uh, and get to Wembley. You know, I, I've no doubt it's not the Wembley that everyone would have liked, you know, having been in playoff finals in recent years. But, you know, it's it's going to be a really, really tough game. You know, Bradford are, they are maybe where they are in the, in League Two, but that, you know, I'd seen on Tuesday night, they beat MK Dons. You know, they've got goals in their team. They, they won 4-0 on that night. And it's going to be a tough game. You know, they'll go up there, they'll probably pack it out and fill it out and be loud and boisterous. And, you know, it's an atmosphere we'll have to deal with and, and you know, stamp our authority on the game as best we can. But it's, you know, it is a really tough game, but, you know, with the prize of Wembley at the end of it in a cup final to look for, it's, you know, in a, in a season that things haven't gone our way, you know, it would be something that's, that would be very welcomed. And just going back to this weekend, obviously a great opportunity for, for fans to, to support the team in what will be a, a, a huge game anyway, but also a, a lovely opportunity for, for supporters to, to really show you know, their support for uh, Adam Anker's family and, and lovely that the, the club are renaming Adams Park Adams with an apostrophe uh, in, in his memory this weekend as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it was a, a, a such a tragic story that obviously we all heard about, and um, 
you know, it's just something that you never, ever, ever want to to hear about. It's such, you know, as soon as the players heard, you know, we, we wrote the, the messages to the family and things. And, and it was so nice to see the, uh, the club come together as a, as sort of one and, and really show the love and the support for his family because I can't imagine how difficult times have been in, since it's happened. And, you know, like you said there, the club doing even small gestures, I've no doubt that everything helps during this tough time. And like you said there, the fans can get behind us and nothing brings them together more than, you know, I would think a, a win against our local neighbours. So it, it is a game that's got a lot on it, you know, more more than just in a footballing sense. And, you know, I just hope that we can we can step up and, and do what's needed. It must be so nice as well as a player, but obviously as a, as a fan yourself and, and obviously as a, a person too. But so nice that we're in football, you get supporters that support clubs, but clubs can support supporters as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it always is. Like you sort of alluded to there, it's always a one-way street that the fans support the club. But, you know, we've had periods before, you know, when I've been here that the club's done created gestures and, and done things to, to help the fans and, and to support families of, of lost ones. And I think it is, it's, you know, the, the more I think it can be a two-way street, the better for everyone involved. And, you know, that includes the players as well. And I think it's um, because you are inevitably all fighting for the same goal. You know, the fans play their part, the players are out there, but, you know, the fans most definitely are the, the sort of base of a club. You know, I, I don't think there would be a single football club in the world that didn't have fans that would be successful. So, I think it, they are definitely the sort of the crux of everything that we try and do. And I think the more that the the club or the, the players can give back to the fans is, you know, it's, it's especially in occasions like this is, is a beautiful thing. I really appreciate your time. Fantastic to speak to you as always. Um, hopefully you'll be back on the, on the pitch on Saturday and wish you and the team all the best for that. No, thank you very much, bud. Here's all for me. Thank you. Great chatting to uh, Captain Jack. Fantastic. Uh, great to have uh, him on the show this week. Uh, Luke's back with us with the notice board section. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, Jack, who now just heckles producer Luke at me, which I feel is quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just going to shout Captain Jack back in. Uh, would you like some breaking news? Yes, please. Black Beauty's back for a new series. <laughs> uh, the breaking news is at 7.57. Uh, the dubious goal panel have deemed that the first and fourth goals against Peterborough were own goals Ooh. and therefore the strikes won't be officially credited to Kane or Sam oh. boo but they will be credited to Gareth McCleary apparently all of them uh, yeah all every goal from now on is all just going to be GMAC uh, would you like some news for tomorrow yes please uh, Wickham Wanderers are going to be in the Eden Shopping Centre as half part term. Uh, is half term uh, as part of the Green Eden activities. Uh, Joe Jacobson and Jasper Patterson will be making appearances. Uh, that's going to be between two thirty and three thirty p.m. Uh, near the Black Sheep Coffee. Will they be in their green kits? Oh, that's a good Matt. If you're listening, <laughs> get them in the green kits. Uh, it, there's a massive leaf. You can't miss it. Just head there. All the details on the website. Um, as we've been hearing throughout the show, and you may have seen on social media as well, uh, Wickham Wanderers are renaming their stadium for one week only as a tribute to the 17-year-old who supports uh, Adam Ankers. Uh, they are changing it, and I've seen some of the signs today. Adams Park with an apostrophe. Uh, not only uh, are they going to be doing that, there's going to be a minute's applause ahead of kickoff uh, on Saturday. Uh, the team are going to be wearing T-shirts with Adam's name on and squad number during the warm-up uh, and black armbands as well during the game. Uh, those uh, warm-up T-shirts are going to be... Um, used as a fundraiser through the foundation to raise money uh, for Thames Valley Air Ambulance and Harefield Hospital as well. Uh, and we send, of course, all our best and thoughts to Adam's family as well. And there'll be more uh, tributes from some of the Wickham Sound team uh, on the post-match show as well uh, on uh, Saturday after full time. Uh, some other news from Adams Park as well is they're going to be screening the semi-final in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy Ooh. Uh, at Adams Park in the Caledonian Suite. Uh, there is a golf day it's back on the 26th of March uh, and there's a breakfast ahead of the Reading fi- fixture as well. I do like a breakfast. We all like a breakfast. All of that available on the Wickwanderers website as of today, www.fc.com. There you go. Excellent notice board Thank section. Thank you very much. With actual sound effects as well. I know, yeah. Got everything this week. Much to look forward to. We've got the whole game live, of course, on Saturday. Rob and team will be in the car park. They will indeed. Oxford United, the visitors. Set to be a special atmosphere, obviously with uh, the tributes to Adam. Uh, also, of course, a local derby 
and uh, of course Oxford uh, among the teams in the playoff places currently we've already taken on Peterborough and Bolton are in the top uh, echelons of the table echelons that's good get you I know another 5-2 would be good fantastic to put a brilliant uh, run together as well and uh, excellent build up of course to Wednesday's game in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy semi-final only one game away from Wembley Ooh, that'd be nice yes much to look forward to have an excellent week come on you blues (laughs) 